Thanks. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you a story of entrepreneurship and how anyone in this room can become a successful entrepreneur thanks to the network represented in this room. And we have one of our core values to thank for this, this concept of beyond yourself. Because I can tell you, I'll give you many examples over the next few minutes of how Carmenta came into being, largely because of the generosity of the time, the effort of uh, my classmates and, and other Haas alumni. So my story starts actually here at Haas. I was uh, in the Berkeley Columbia program, as she said, as an executive MBA program. I was an executive at a large biopharmaceutical company called Roche. But I always had this aspiration to, to do a startup, to actually be an entrepreneur. But it was tremendously scary and uh, intimidating, just the sheer enormity of it. And uh, so one of the things I did whenever I, I, I joined Haas when I was here, I spent a lot of time studying entrepreneurship. I thought, you know, it's the scientist in me. I have a scientific background. The scientist in me was like, all I've got to do is study some entrepreneurs who are successful, find the common thread, understand the pattern, and then just replicate that pattern. Right? That's how we do it in science. So that's all I've got to do. Well, fast forward, you know, uh, some time in business school. I spent a lot of time with some successful entrepreneurs. I find no pattern. In fact, <laughs> it gets worse. These successful entrepreneurs were way less remarkable than I had ever envisioned. <laughs> These guys weren't the smartest guys in the room. They weren't the hardest working guys in the room. I mean, you talk about a balloon just getting deflated. That's my image of these people just went, went nowhere. But the, the great thing that came from this was that I realized, wait a minute, if these guys can do this, <laughs> anybody in this room can do this, so why not me? Seriously, that's, that's the big idea. If, if these guys can do this, anybody in this room can do this, so why not me? So, I did what Tim referred to as the uh, career skydiving thing. You know, I jump out of the Roche plane and uh, start Carmenta. And day one, faced with my first challenge that was bigger than me, the first challenge where I needed help. And it was when a set of incorporation documents this thick land on my desk. Matt, we need you to sign this. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anything about all this stuff. I start reading it. There's phrases in there like, notwithstanding the foregoing. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> I still don't know what that means, and it's in there like 30 times. <laughs> so luckily, I, I call up a classmate of mine, Trevor Cox. Trevor, you're a lawyer. Man, walk me through this. He's like, oh, don't worry. You know, here's what you need to know. This is what's important. This is what's not important, et cetera. So I worked through that first challenge. After that, you know, okay, the, the company is established. Sorry, I say established. It's not established. It's founded. It's just paperwork. I come up with a product development strategy. We're building a diagnostic test for preeclampsia. I have a scientific background, so I kind of know a little bit about that. But now I realize, man, I need to understand my market. What is my target market? How am I going to get my product to that market? And luckily for me, I come to a Haas reunion weekend, just like this one. And I start partying, I mean, <clears throat> networking <laughs> with the current class. One thing leads to another. Before I know it, I have a team of five people from the current class who took on Carmenta as an independent study project. And they defined my target market and my go-to-market strategy for me. It was tremendously helpful, because again, I'm a scientist. I'm not a, I'm not a marketing guy. Um, so now I'm armed with all this information. It's time to raise some money. So I go out there, time to pitch. Well, I've never been responsible for the pitch before. Luckily, classmate, Tracy Saxon, Life Science VC, gives me all her tips. Learn from her, great. I go out to raise money trying to raise $300,000 of seed financing to get this thing off the ground. Within a few weeks, we closed around at over $2 million. That's cool, but that's not really cool. What the big thing from that was $500,000 of that round came from my class, my classmates. Yeah. The true test to be on yourself is if somebody gives you a check. That's. So they went beyond themselves. So you know, now that the company's established, and now it's actually the hard grind of actually creating value and, and creating a company, getting it off the ground and getting it going. And this is where the big, big problems come, daily, weekly. 
You know, there's like, I counted five company killing, I should say potentially company killing moments in Carmenta's history. And thankfully for me, I had people like Michael Shapit, Tim Campos, again, from my class, people who work in similar roles, people who are sounding boards for me, help me make pivotal decisions. I mean, I can give you five examples where I was gonna go this way. I talked to them, I ended up going this way, and we're better off for it. I'm running out of time, and I'll just jump to the end. <laughs> the wonderful thing is about three weeks ago, uh, Carmenta was acquired by a large diagnosis company. And that was great, that was amazing. But uh, one of the, the most satisfying things for me was, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of, of uh, well, the title of my talk was like, you know, what are the things that we, the network can do to enable entrepreneurship? I just gave you examples. Well, one of the crescendo events for me was just a couple days ago, one of my investors, one of my classmates decided to leave his job at Google and start his own company. And I was like, it was so tremendously satisfying for me to hear that. And I'm having lunch with him the other day, and I'm like, wow, this is great. Was it your financial windfall from Carmenta that, that enabled this? <laughs> I'm trying to take credit, right? And he's like, no, not exactly. I mean, it helped, but that's not exactly it. And I was like, oh, what was it? He's like, well, it was more of a kind of, you know, watching you go through Carmenta. I was able to observe you and see what you did and everything. And I realized that, you know, if you can do it. <laughs> Thank you.